Tariff, New Zealand, Hong Kong, China, Closer Economic Partnership Agreement, Amendment Bill, first reading. Mr Speaker. Honourable David Carter. Mr Speaker, I move that the Tariff, New Zealand, Hong Kong, China, Closer Economic Partnership Agreement, Amendment Bill may now read a first time. At the appropriate time, I intend to move that the Tariff, New Zealand, Hong Kong, China, Closer Economic Partnership Agreement Amendment Bill be considered by the Foreign Affairs, Defence and Trade Committee, that the Committee report to the House on or before 29 July 2010, and that the Committee have the authority to meet at any time while the House is sitting, except during oral questions, and during any evening on a day on which there has been a sitting of the House, and on a Friday and a week in which there has been a sitting of the House, despite standing orders 187 and 190. 1B and C. Reporting back, Mr Speaker, by 29 July 2010 will enable New Zealand to remain on course to complete its domestic procedures for the purposes of the agreement's entry into force on 1 October 2010. For this to occur, Hong Kong and New Zealand must each, noti have, must each have notified before 31 August 2010 that they have completed their domestic procedures. The New Zealand-Hong Kong-China Closer Economic Partnership Agreement, or CEP as it is often called, is an important milestone for New Zealand and is the first free trade agreement which Hong Kong has signed outside mainland China. Hong Kong is both an important business hub and a significant market in its own right. It is currently New Zealand's ninth largest export destination. Merchandise trade between our two economies has been growing at an average of 7.5 per cent per year for the last five years, and last year was worth close to $1 billion. Hong Kong is also strategically important as a trading partner located at the heart of Asia and is an important platform for New Zealand companies entering into mainland China. New Zealand is the only country in the world to have trade agreements with both mainland China and Hong Kong. And this is important because it is clear that China will play an increasingly larger role in New Zealand's trading future. In the first year following the entry into force of the China FTA, the increase in New Zealand's exports to China was some $1.1 billion NZ, which is almost as much as our entire annual exports to Korea. China recently surpassed United States to become New Zealand's second largest export market after Australia as well as our second largest overall trading partner. It is no coincidence that our exports to China grew last year at the same time as we were experiencing dramatic expansion of trade with China. A free trade agreement with Hong Kong can be of particular use for businesses wanting to take advantage of Hong Kong's knowledge and experience of doing business with China, its relationships into the Chinese market as well as its relatively familiar legal system. Hong Kong can also serve as an important base for other markets in North Asia and the wider region, for it is an important regional trading hub. Let me outline some of the key elements of the New Zealand Hong Kong CEP, free trade and goods. One of the key outcomes of many of our FTA negotiations is the elimination of tariffs imposing costs on our export goods. The tariff barriers that pre presently exist between Hong Kong and New Zealand are relatively low. The CEP locks in duty-free access for all New Zealand goods expo exported to Hong Kong, including the 14 per cent of Hong Kong tariffs that are not currently bound at zero. New Zealand will phase out tariffs on imported goods from Hong Kong in a way that mirrors the phasing out agreed toward China. Rules of origin. We have agreed rules of origin which brief, uh, broadly mirror those in the China FTA. This, coupled with parallel tariff phrasing, removes any incentives for Chinese manufacturers to try to circumvent the New Zealand-China FTA and seek preferential access to New Zealand under the CEP. Better access for services exporters. New Zealand services providers will benefit from greater certainty of access into the Hong Kong services market, including in private education, business services, environmental services and logistics. Subject to certain exceptions, 
New Zealand service exporters will also have their position in Hong Kong market future proofed through what is technically called a quote, most favoured nation clause. This clause is important because it will enable our services exporters to benefit from the same treatment that other countries negotiate with Hong Kong in the future. Movement of business people. New Zealand business people will have the benefit of expeditious processing of applications for business visas. Short-term business visitors will be able to get a 90-day visa. Further, in a broad range of sectors, senior managers and specialists employed by New Zealand companies based in Hong Kong will be able to stay for a year, extendable up to five years. Government procurement. New Zealand companies will be guaranteed ongoing access to New Zealand's government procurement contracts on a broadly equivalent footing with local suppliers. This will be the first FTA since the Trans-Pacific Strategic Economic Partnership Agreement with Singapore, Chile and Brunei, in which we have secured commitments in this area. Measures to improve the business environment. Other measures relating to custom procedures and co cooperation, sanitary and phytosanitary measures, technical barriers to trade, intellectual property, competition and e-commerce will help to reduce barriers to doing business between New Zealand and Hong Kong at a practical level. There is also a consultation and dispute settlement mechanism included in this agreement. Labour and Environment. Alongside the CEP, New Zealand and Hong Kong have entered into a memorandum of understanding on labour cooperation and an environment cooperation agreement. Commitment to negotiate new investment plan, uh, rules. Alongside the CEP, New Zealand and Hong Kong have also agreed to negotiate an investment protocol within two years of entry into force of the CEP. This will update the investment provisions contained in the existing bilateral arrangement, uh, agreement for the promotion and protection of investments that dates from 1995. While it is envisaged, it is envisaged that, this, that the investment protocol will provide for strength and disciplines and protections for investors, there is no intention that the protocol would alter the categories of investment which are subject to screening under the Overseas Investment Act. In summary, Mr Speaker, this CEP is an important achievement for both economies. For New Zealand, it establishes a clear, certain and effective framework within which New Zealand companies can compete in a dynamic and rewarding market. Importantly, it also complements our groundbreaking free trade agreement with China. Together, this provides us with an unparalleled opportunity to increase our exports to a region that will continue to be of central importance to our economy over the decades ahead. The bill will amend the tariff of New Zealand by insert, inserting Hong Kong, China in the list of preferential countries in Note 3 of the tariff. This is the only statutory amendment required to give effect to the CEP. Following this amendment, certain amendments by regulation will also be required to enable the application of preferential tariff rates under the CEP. Mr Speaker, I commend this bill to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Call the Honourable Marion Speaker.